So for the first question, correct to one significant figures. So the first number there is seven. So you're required to look at the numbers behind it. Okay, since it is more than five, hence you're required to round it up as 8,000. Whereby for the second part, do take note that zero is not counted. So the first two zero there, you're required to skip it. So the first number was seven. Hence the numbers behind it is also more than five. Hence you're required to round it up as 0 0.08. Question 2, pretty straightforward, just keen into the calculator. So since they mentioned about having one decimal place only, so 1.4, you're required to look at the value behind the 4 there. So it is also 4, which is less than 5. Hence, you're required to round it down. Okay, so we find the results 1.4. For part 3, simply substitute whatever value that was given into the equation. Okay, I use black pen to indicate it. So your final results will be 118.75. Question 4, pretty straightforward. Do take note that we are using the exterior angle formula which is 360 divided by n equals to 6. So your n here will be 6n equals to 360, n value is 60. Whereby for question 5, the population of Singapore times 75% equals to 72. So population of Singapore is 96. So next part, find the range. Range which means taking the largest minus the smallest. Do take note that you don't take the frequency to run the calculation. Okay, Take the largest amount of people in each car minus the smallest one. So the range will be 4. The median, you're required to use cumulative frequency to identify it. So at 50%, it is actually 62.5 yet. So this one is actually falling under the numbers of people in each car as 2. The mode is the one with highest frequency count. So that will be 1. Question 4, first thing I did was to calculate the rounding value, okay, since they mentioned nearest 1000, so 1000 divided by 2, you get plus minus 500, okay, so 2600 rand, and they wanted the lower bound, so 82,000 minus 500, multiply by 2600, you will get 211,900,000 so convert this into standard form I actually shifted forward by 8 step so I write it as 2.119 times 10 to the power of 8 so a water pipeline in Australia is a cylinder with a radius of 0.65 meters and length of 85 kilometers okay so pi r square times h fill up the blank 0 0.5 0 0.65 meters you remain it but you're required to change the 85 kilometers into 85,000 meters so your final answer is 112,000 822.45 Question 5 Okay, so write down the closing time on Saturday in 12 hour format So the 1730 minus 1200 you will get it as 5.30 p.m. So calculate the total numbers of hours open in a week. So Monday to Friday, the working hours is 10 hours and 45 minutes. 
whereby for Saturday and Sunday it is 10 hours and 3 hours and 15 minutes. So multiply the first day by 5. However, you notice there I written it as 3 over 4. Reason being I converted the 45 minutes into hours. So the total hours here will be 67. Question 10, pretty straightforward. Just run your manual calculation. You should get your x as 4.4. Question 11 here, you actually required to break it down into two separate inequalities. So the first one is actually 16 less than 2x minus 5. Your x value will be more than 10.5. Whereby for the next one is 2x minus 5 less than 48, x is actually less than 26.5. So the prime numbers in between these inequalities will be 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. So for question 12, First thing first, I found the volume by taking 10 times 25 times 35, which is 8,750. So I find the skill factor here, okay, by taking the cube root of 15,120 divided by 8,750. So your skill factor is actually 6 over 5. Then I calculate the dimension of this box by taking 10 times 6 over 5, 25 times 6 over 5, and 35 times 6 over 5. It is 12, 30, and 42 respectively. If you are unfamiliar with this particular topic, okay, I actually made a video specifically explaining on the solving method evolving around mathematically similar topic. So you can just watch that and revisit this question. Question 13, the keyword here is directly. So my equation goes by m equals to k times liter cube. So substitute the m and l's value in. Okay, I get my k equals to 2. So substitute 7 and 2 into it. Then you will get your results as 686. Question 14, this is actually in this topic. So for part A, since the base are both the same, which is 3 over 8, I just take their power, add them both up. Okay, so my P will be 3 over 8 and my Q will be 1 over 2. Whereby for part B, so things that I did was to shift away the 5 to the power of negative 4 to the other side. So I take 5 to the power of negative 3 plus 5 to the power of negative 4 divided by 5 to the power of negative 4. So in your calculator, your result should be 6. Question 15. Okay, find the acceleration. So key things here is you simply use the gradient formula and you get the answer already. So do take note that the acceleration will make your gradient results in negative. However, when you write down the answer, the negative must be excluded. So calculate the total distance. For this, simply find the area of this particular shape. So I have a top and bottom of 10, 20 divided by 2 times 10 plus the other one which is a larger trapezium which is 30 plus 35 divided by 2 times 15. So your final result 637.5. Question 16, I plot down all the coordinates first and things to take note is for you to draw the line of best fit, all you need to do is to join up as many points as possible. And those that you didn't join them up must be 
stay closely next to the line you have drawn okay so to describe the correlation this one is actually a positive correlation because as the numbers sent out increase the numbers of reply increases as well for question 17 part a and b this is actually the serious topic so it is removed from the syllabus already so there's no need to solve this So looking at question 18, okay, so on the grid of next page, find the transformation represented by BA. So BA, after you run the calculation, you will get it as negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So this one is actually an enlargement from the origin with a scale factor of negative 1, which means your image of the object will be inverted. Okay, so I indicated over at the graph next to it. Question 19, this one is actually a function question. Okay, so first I substituted negative 1 into f and I gotten the results as 2. Then I put the 2 into f again, so your final result is 5. Same thing for part B, I substituted 3x into x position. I get the results as 9x squared plus 1. Then this 9x squared plus 1, I feed it into gx x position. So after the final calculation, I get 3x squared plus 1 as the results. For you to find inverse of gx, I have a three step method. First, I change gx into y. Step 2 is to swap x and y's position with each other. Then, step 3, rearrange and find the new y. So, your new y here is actually 3x minus 2 and this will be your g inverse result. Question 20. Okay, things to take note, keyword here is intersect at x-axis, which means your y equals to 0. Okay. The other thing is you need to calculate the distance of PQ. So when your y equals to 0, your x-coordinates will be negative 4, 0, and the other line will be 6, 0. Using the distance formula attached over there, your PQ distance is actually 10. So write down the equation with a gradient of negative 4 passing through 0, 5. So first, I use the universal formula, which is y equals to mx plus c. Fill up the m with negative 4, substitute 0, 5 into it. Then I get my c as 5. So your final equation, y equals to negative 4x plus 5. For question C, the keyword here is parallel, which means that the gradient is the same. However, the things that are different here is you substitute a different point into it and gotten your C as 24. So your final equation for this particular line they are referring to will be y equals to negative 4x plus 24. So I hope you find this helpful. Okay, do share it to your friends that are struggling and I wish you all the best for your upcoming examination. Thank you.